Hi everyone, it's Furtis here from 3D Mutiny and today I'm going to go through Discord users' feedback. I've also created a work in progress forum. So it's really great to see people that have started threads there. I've definitely been looking through them all and giving some advice here and there. But this video format is basically a, a more formal way of me giving you paint overs, which are much more useful. feedback is for Tony Plus. He's doing a famous fighter and he started from a sphere, which is an awesome process to see. Now, this is obviously a very hard challenge going from a sphere and trying to match a likeness. Really cool to see how you've arranged your references. You've obviously seen the reference video where I go over my process for setting up references, especially for likeness sculpts. So these are obviously going to really help you when it comes to the silhouettes and just basically understanding what sort of shapes are taking place here. So if you're interested in that sort of process, I'll link the video in the description below. Now, these are really fun to give feedback for because you've actually done a really good job with the likeness uh, looking at it straight away at a very quick glance it does look like it's representing the character well so that can also be a curse at the same time because I can give very minute feedback but you also don't want to waste too much time in making these changes I'd say you're pretty close to finish but if you want to push it a little bit further we can go through feedback here so the first observation that I make uh, which might help you is to basically focus around the eye area and then work out from there so if you look on the reference here the character has um, a certain amount of white of their eye and that's basically going to dictate what their eyelid shape is so usually what you find is the peak of the eyelid is aligned to the iris or the pupil and that's pretty indicative with this character here so if I draw a line down you can see the, the apex is at the top there so related to your sculpt what that's going to involve is basically budging these eyelids around to match the whites of the eye there so potentially pushing these corners in so for example on your sculpt the the lines of the eyes here that go towards the end of the head are quite long so you might just want to pinch these a little bit while also transferring it over to the side so that what that means for the concept is in the concept his eyes are quite round uh, whereas in the sculpt these are quite long almost like a, like an Egyptian eye I think the representation of the nose is pretty good so the overall shape the only difference I would make is get rid of these areas so right now that cut off transition is very deep and you can see it here whereas on the character and, and most characters really you've got a lot of skin that just flows naturally up into this direction so what it basically means is you're going to be getting rid of this very harsh so just get the brush and sort of brush in this direction it's going to make it flow much nicer up to the top of the nose that's a really really common one for characters um, sometimes to fill that in what I like to do is do the initial shape that you understand and then get a clay brush and a clay brush is really good for filling in chasms so you can just get a clay brush and go like that next set of feedback is for the mouth area and I think there's one brush that I can suggest which is going to really help you here and that's the inflate brush so if you get the inflate brush and basically focus on areas where fat is starting to come out you could definitely start with the lips so for example the mouth line here is quite straight and flat whereas on the reference you've got a lot of interesting shapes here obviously it's asymmetrical and you leave that to the end if you follow this sort of shape and introduce that it'll be a little bit more accurate once you've got that initial shape I would then focus on areas like the middle central lip so right here is almost like a, a sphere that's popping out so you just want to get the inflate brush and just bring that out slightly this person also has a very pinched and pronounced front of lip like top lip up here so maybe get an inverted dam standard and just introduce that next area we're going to focus on is the outside of the mouth and going towards the end of the mandible and it's this shape interpretation you want to make down here is lots of mouth muscles that are used for bringing the mouth outwards so the shape here that's being made is quite curved and then what that does it makes the divot that you've successfully import, imported here. But the reason this chasm exists is primarily from the inner shape here. So sort of coming in this direction, basically what you want to do is again, maybe get the inflate brush or something like a clay brush and just follow that direction. A very useful thing to do is just do cross hatching just like this and make that interpretation. That's going to bring this out and make it a bit more bulky. Now, if I rub that all away, you can see how it's quite flat in that area. Whereas with the character, it's obviously like poking out a bit. And the thing about this muscle and skin, it all leads back down to the chin so it sort of fades away into this direction a common thing that people do is to create the chin they'll brush with a, something like a dam standard and create this rainbow effect whereas when it comes to the mouth you've got a lot of muscles that are leading in this direction so they almost radiate out don't know if you've seen like magnets on the world for example the north pole and the south pole it's kind of like that effect so in general if you keep your brush strokes in this direction um, it's going to follow the contours and the muscle and then in turn it's going to give the mouth a really cool effect so just get rid of this this chasm area where I'm rubbing out right now just something like a clay brush and then go back over with maybe a clay build up tubes 
or the inflate brush and just doing that entire line. You can give the same effect uh, on the brow here. So you can see there's quite a harsh highlight. Now it can be a little bit tricky if your Z brush lighting is slightly different. Obviously we've got broad lights, but if I look from the side, um, the brow is actually quite flat. Whereas on this character, it's quite pronounced. I think in this reference, you can really see that for an example. It's almost flicking out and then coming back very sharply. So you want to translate that shape and just build it out. Now you could get a brush and just go in that direction. I wouldn't really advise it. Something is like we did with the mouth is just brush in this direction and what that's going to do is going to create this rounded contour and then when I'm brushing in this direction is just do a couple of additional brushes on the inside and then what that's going to do is going to bring out the front of the brow and then if you imagine this from the top of the head it's going to give this nice arching shape so the nose is going to be there and we're going to get this nice brow that comes out from all the additional brush strokes we made so that goes right down to there looking from the three-fourths view I'll have to double check but I reckon that this is going to come in you don't usually see that on people um and potentially the silhouette of the cheekbone is coming out a bit too high. So he might have quite a sharp cheekbone. So I see that a lot in students. Whenever someone sees a sharp cheekbone, they tend to draw it out quite a lot. So whenever you are putting in that form, just remember to put it back and push it back into the head. So you can see what that looks like with a side by side reference. I think it's most evident on these sorts of shots. Um, so for example, the top of his head, you can see there's obviously a very almost like a 45 degree slope that can sometimes be pushed off if the character's looking up. The best way to track that is just note where their eyes are. Then you can sort of get an assessment of where they're looking. Obviously use other references to confirm that. So on, on these two references, we've obviously got quite a sharp fall off that goes back into the head. So just keep on redrawing these shapes. Remember what sort of angle that is. It's sort of like a 45 degree angle. Come back to your reference and then just introduce that. It's just the difference between creating a head that's that sort of square shape uh, and a cranium that just sort of like bows over. Another thing I found really useful when it comes to characters and silhouettes, I've mainly look at three areas, three stages of curvature that's really useful. Um, they're quite hard to see on the front of the character because they have different depths, like some are at the back, some are at the front, some are at the middle. So I'm going to show you what that is. The first is the curvature. So you can decide whether that's going to be the apex of the, of the cheekbone or you can pick another place. You've got a curvature that's going a little bit like this. Obviously where that translates to yours is around here. So I think you've been quite accurate with the positioning, especially from the front side of where that's located. Maybe you just want to shave it off a little bit here because it's popping out a bit too much. So maybe just get the brush and come inwards like that. The next curvature is towards the back of the cranium and it's this sort of shape right here and it almost vanishes behind the ear it also vanishes behind the cheekbone common mistake that usually people do is they try and match the shape and they usually get a bit of clay from this area and bring it outwards when in actual fact what's happening this curvature is being made by quite a large muscle so if you ever really bite your jaw you can see that pop out in the mirror so whenever you want to create this silhouette basically you want to be looking at this area and this area what you're going to do is just going to pull it outwards and then I'll rub out the area that you don't want to pull. So all this is going to create this arching shape at the back. Now what makes that a little bit tricky is when the ear has already been inserted. So what you might have to do is get a very large move brush and just basically move that ear backwards in. That's usually why I like to keep the ear floating so I can work on the underside of the head first. Next piece of curvature is going to be the outside of the mandible or the thing that you can see from the front. Now with this character, it's really big, probably one of the biggest um, in terms of characters on the upper end of it, broad and long, and it goes all the way down here. That's also another sort of biting muscle, usually towards the back of the teeth. If you're biting very hard, this sort of section is going to come outwards. Now, usually a mistake people make is to create this silhouette. They'll basically look at this area and try and bring out that woods. But the thing is that silhouette is actually being made by a different kind of muscle, and it's actually around this sort of area. So I'm just cross hatching it there. So whenever you're making this shape, so say, for example, trying to translate it onto your sculpt. We'll be bringing out this. Now the trick here is to not make it accidentally bleed back into the cheekbone. So here you can see almost there's quite a smooth transition that goes all the way back up, trying to break that up a little bit. More going for something that leads back in on itself like this. So it curls a little bit more inside. And then what that sets up is the three layers of um, of curvature here. So the more that you can, the more that you can separate them, um, the better the character is going to look from the front side. But overall, really good likeness. Um, it'd almost be far easier if I had the object and I could sort of paint on top of it. Uh, maybe we could do that in the future. If you're interested in posting your own works in progress for future videos, for example, make sure you join the Discord. It's all about working on your portfolio to become the best game artist you can hopefully get a job in the industry. But the link for that should be in the description below. Next set of feedback is for Aqua Halis, who's doing seems what to be like an African boxer or like a traditional fighter. Um, so posted some sculpts and also 
seems to have already started the texturing process. Got some feedback for the sculpts and the feedback, it should be able to be implemented. You would just have to basically like rebake the high poly uh, through substance. It should be totally possible. So I think the face is looking really good, like especially with this likeness, potentially around the top of the cranium. A common mistake I see a lot of people do is, is this area of the head. And usually what happened is because it's covered by the hair, uh, often people bring this area out. When actual fact, it's usually a lot smaller than usual. Um, just imagine the shape of a skull. Like if you ever see it on Google Images, uh, the chances are it's not going to have this sort of like square shape. Um, so all that square shape ba basically comes from the mass of the hair. So you might just want to push this inwards slightly and, and arch it around like that. I think it's definitely worth um, inserting the moustache if you are going for something like that. I can see on the references you've got two moustaches here. Um, that's just going to help you with the proportions and basically positioning things. I think the, the ears are really good actually. Um, it's nice to see someone who's worked on the ears, usually they're left towards the end. I think they're they're seated on the character well. Area for improvement is basically around this sort of area, around the, the clavicle and its interaction with the neck. Um, so especially with the clavicle, if we look here, for example, um, the direction it's going in usually depends on where the shoulders are going to be positioned, say if someone's shrugging, pushing their arms out or have them above the head that angle is going to change but in general um, it's usually this shape you'll see a lot of sub triangles that we can draw on your reference for interpretation so the first thing I'd basically fix is the angle of the clavicle that you've got here and also the space that is in between it because usually if you put your fingers there you can feel two nodules and that dictates basically the space in between those so you want to take this angle and basically just position it a bit more like this either straight or slightly lifted depending on people's mechanics usually when they raise their arms they tend to also uh, raise their shoulder blades and in turn their, their traps so they're almost like shrugging so we just aim to hinge this upwards a little bit like this once you fix the basically everything that falls on top of it is going to be quite a, a chasm area and you can see it on this character obviously they're bending over so it's, it's slightly pronounced um, the size of their traps are coming out and then also the size of their and the bone of their clavicle is coming out is making this pit so depending on if the character has uh, maybe like a bad posture usually the clav clavicle comes out and it gets a bit deeper around this neck area I just treat it a bit more like a, a triangle. Whereas if the character has it with their shoulders back, usually that area is a little bit more flat. Depending on how you want to approach it, uh, I really suggest just going in a little bit more deeper. That's going to bring out the um, the size of the traps here, this muscle that goes behind the neck. And it's also going to define your clavicle. Um, so just gets that nice bony landmark out. It's going to be a nice transition. Other areas potentially to improve on the sculpt uh, and that will help you in your bake. And also when it comes to your textures is basically the transition of the surface. So in places, I think um, some of the muscular is getting lost maybe it's not as tight as it could be and also on the details say for example I'd, I don't know if that's sort of like scarring that they do on purpose um, around the shoulders and also on the front I think your sculpt would basically benefit from a varied use of brushes so right now it seems that these strokes have been a lot of um, the standard brush or maybe a dam standard so if you look at it from the side usually what that creates is this sort of shape um, whereas if you look at the reference here you've got quite a lot of interesting extrusions so exactly in fact the surface is actually doing a bit like this it's sort of like arching around popping out going back in on itself and then coming out again that can sometimes be hard to interpret with certain brushes but um, I'll probably show you some techniques just now on how to do that but in the meantime um, just be a just observe these sorts of areas so primarily this area down here um, I'll show you how to to build that up and also any areas um like this where it looks a bit more shrink wrapped and not, not very physical. Taking that into ZBrush, usually what happens with the standard, you know, you can follow the direction um, of folds or maybe you've got incisions. Now, if you look at it from the side, um, it's giving this, this arched effect, right? If I switch to flat color, you can see it's basically poking out. What you ideally want to go for, say for example, you're trying to make one of these uh, quite large scars. There's a couple of techniques you could use for that. So probably what I would take preference on is just to mask a particular area. And then if you click off the canvas, invert it. And then with this piece of clay, we can start to use different brushes to almost like overlap that scar on. Uh, probably what I would do is get something like a clay tubes and you don't have to be very accurate. And what it's creating here, for example, it's making more of a, a squared effect. So obviously, if you want to make more squared extrusions like like with his scars, uh, it can be done like that. Another, another benefit of using the mask is you can come to something like a move brush and you can just start to move this back on top of each or on top of itself. So you can create this sort of um, shelving look. 
And it just makes the the scarring look a bit better. You know, if it's a scar, there's lots of blood there and a lot of swelling, um, a lot of hard tissue as well. So you're trying to basically interpret that. Another thing you can also do, um, I'll do another section over here. If you mask an area, draw that mask out and make it nice and accurate. So you can rub away, what, rub away areas just so it fits on the surface nicely. It's maybe got a little bit more interest. After that, you can use a brush called Inflate. Um, and what Inflate's going to do, it's not only going to bring the clay outwards, but it's also going to make it go side to side so that's really perfect for um, the examples here it almost looks like it's bloating so what you can do is just get the inflate brush if you increase the size of the brush and because we have it already masked it's going to have an increased effect so it's going to go more side to side and you can see it's got this ugly, ugly effect where it's basically overlapping on itself now if we look from the side uh, switch to a flat color you can see how it's got that sort of like bulbous effect so there's a real difference between doing a standard brush like you can see down here and uh, just mixing up with the mask and an inflate so nice thing about that afterwards is you can come in and start to really refine this scarring maybe give it some like hard skin and direction maybe some twisting and weaving and things like that um now if you imagine that's all around your character i think that they have a really nice effect on your sculpt you've basically interpreted the the flow i just think that the if the brush technique was increased you'd get some really nice details out of that now with these areas it's the same so for example when you've got thin skin chances are that it's laying flat against uh, something like a hard muscle translated from the side right now we've got kind of a smooth transition that that goes up now that can that can sometimes be good for tenderness areas so for example like uh, around the pectoral where you've got a lot of tendon stretching um, this sort of side shape can be quite effective so you, you could potentially leave it there um, but when it comes to skin that's folding on top of itself which is on top of muscle you usually have to you usually have a bit of more of an overhang so the skin's going to be lying flat here the muscle is going to be underneath and then the skin is only going to have a very slight a slight indentation that comes out and sometimes it folds back in on itself so for example where a character is um, bending over chances are the top of the skin is going to basically overflow on top of the bottoms you classically see that with fat folds you know if you look at your stomach when you're bending over that sort of effect happens you'll have a nice uh, transition that sort of like bends over itself so interpreting that into zbrush or Z yeah zbrush what you could do keep your normal standard brush potentially what i would do and a good t technique for this so if you come down to something called morph target and you're going to store a morph target. This is basically a way that we can uh, go back on ourselves. Get a standard brush and then draw the skin fold that you had. So maybe the character's bending over or they're very thin. However, if you keep on going over it, all that's going to happen is um, what I just described. So if you want to fix that, what you could potentially do is get a damn standard and then just go underneath it. So that's a, a way of doing it. So just go over it a couple of times. And what that does is it, it sharpens the underside and makes it give that, uh, that over spilling effect. I'll just smooth that out. Alternatively, what you could do if you really want to enhance this, mask the underside and you can make this as, as soft, soft as sharp as you want. Then come to the move tool. Then you're just going to get that skin and make it drop down a little bit. And that's going to really tighten. Um, that's really hard for a brush to simulate this effect. So that's why this technique is very good. And now that's that's obviously a character with almost no fat on their skin, but I'm just showing um, how what sort of effects you can get if you if you use that technique. Now, what we did with storing the morph target, if you don't like what you see, you can come to something called a morph brush. Basically what it's gonna do, anywhere you paint, it's gonna bring it back to where you had originally stored the morph target. So that's really useful to say that, you know, I want my original skin back basically. So you could interact with the morph brush like that and just feather on top. And what you can see is happening, it's almost uh, tightening. So if we approach it from all angles and basically work inwards, you can see that it's got this really nice uh, tight skin fold effect so i think um with your character it would really benefit if you use these two techniques to basically simulate this uh, skin effect but then also the um the sort of like scarring tissue that happens on here so next bit of feedback is for Corey, who's doing um a kind of cloth and metal female character starting from uh, a scan base mesh and basically i guess focusing on um, things like equipment and metals, different techniques. So um, I think, yeah, we discussed here was like a, a good selection for the portfolio that they're doing. So in terms of feedback, the initial suggestions that I would make um, is basically on the overall stature of the character. So I don't know how accurate you're trying to be the 2D concept. 
So from here, the, the 2D concept is quite a, a slender character and obviously is elongated by the heels. So I sh heels can be sometimes annoying to do when you're doing a character, like sort of like, how do you pose those? I'll show you how to do that. With your interpretation of the scan character, I would just change some of the proportions. Um, so a good way to look at this is obviously think about the biggest shapes you can. Um, that's one benefit of starting from scratch, like with a mannequin is because you can really start to interpret what sort of base shapes and, and uh, cylinders are here. So this is, uh, obviously quite small a small rib cage for a female um you just want to interpret that over here it might be a case of uh, bringing the shoulders in or maybe just reducing the overall volume um, of this breastplate i think what you've also got is um where the breastplate is sort of like leading and the arm it goes really towards the uh the lat of the character sort of like the side of the rib cage and finishes up towards the top or the midway of the trap so with this interpretation i'd probably just take the breastplate a little bit lower sort of down here reducing the size of the rib cage maybe it's it's aimed here and then the arch is going to come all the way up and end and terminate sort of like halfway up there um, so that shape's just going to be a little bit more indicative of this 2d character um, i don't know how close you're, you're trying to get it obviously if we look at the waist here the waistline and the end of the trim that's happening it's actually one of the uh, smallest parts of the character so you've got this sort of like major shape that goes up and that is basically defining um where there isn't much much bone so it's in between the hips and the rib cage uh, with yours, it's sort of like poking out a little bit. So what I would do is just really make sure that that line dictates where um, the inside is. And that's going to be the main transition. It's good to see that you've started to do uh, a block out for the hair. So that's obviously going to be very useful. Um, take, to t take some time to really represent this shape. So obviously hers is falling a little bit short, but it's also curling around in certain places. Um, it might be nice. There's quite a sharp line that happens on the edge of the hair. That I can see that's sort of here might be nice to interpret that onto this sculpt so just really sharpen that up maybe with a pinch tool and then once you've got that edge you can get your move tool to position and then match that silhouette just so you know you're getting the character um, you've got it actually a little bit here I can see there's an incision and that's probably just to bring the ear out because it was probably hidden uh, but yeah just really get this nice and pinched and then you can start to reshape it and make it have a similar haircut in terms of the hip volume I think because it's um, you've got a 3D scan which is basically like a real person is like what we expect of humans and you're matching that to a 2D concept obviously the 2D concept they're going to take a couple of um, creative liberties generate things that aren't really realistic but uh, necessarily kind of like translate quite cool uh, usually is just like a, a smaller hip area compared to the length of the leg so it's also it's almost like stylized in a way so basically you want to take how all the realism from your underlying scan sort of almost stylize that and, and gamify it especially happened in this um this character and then once you've got those shapes that have matched subscribers probably know i like to sort of like draw shapes around them and match their size just be aware of what sort of thickness are happening with the belts so for example here if we draw boxes uh, be boxes are quite squared and obviously this distance is quite thick whereas in comparison um, to your one it's, it's quite thin now that's going to cause problems a lot uh, down the line so if you want to make this talisman for example uh, it's going to look very strange when it's seated on this thin piece of mesh it could be that you were just trying to get this to help the simulation when it comes to marvelous designer um, so that's that's what it could be and you might be replacing it later so on that note um, marvelous designer can be really good for simulations but also at the same time it can insert a lot of of unnecessary uh, chaos so for example where the cloth is bunching underneath these sort of like arm guards and pieces uh, there's a lot of cloth information so while it does look realistic um, you want to make some edits that make it translate a little bit better from a dist distance read uh, especially for a game character so maybe just think about simplifying certain areas marvelous design is going to do really great for for example these opened up areas where it's going to be very hard to interpret physical cloth but potentially where it starts to to wrap underneath you might want to redo all this and just simplify it um chances are if you, you know if you just have a couple of damn standard or normal lines here uh, you don't necessarily need a simulation for that for that to read well the idea that cloth is sort of like bunching up underneath so maybe redo this area i like the effect that's happened towards the end sort of where this is splitting off into different different sections that's very nice so it's the same sort of uh caveat when it comes to boots my personal preference when creating leather boots i've always found a better translation and more control and to be honest a bit more realism when you start to sculpt the leather from scratch um there especially for a stylized concept which i would call this which is like a 2d stylized there's some very 
to find shapes that uh, almost create the character's feel. So if you're trying to generate that realistically in Marvelous Designer, uh, you often get a lot of really strange folds. Um, it doesn't necessarily uh, work with leathers that well. It can't generate the, the thickness and the hold that's present in a leather. So what you'll have, and probably what you're experiencing here is a lot of collapsing um, and a lot of pain in trying to sort of like simulate that cloth. It's going to be far easier if you start from a normal sculpt and I'll, sh I'll sh show you some techniques on how to do that. Okay, so with something like a leather boot um, and with this work though, you'll get used to this because um, time is going to be an important factor when you're making art for a portfolio or you're working in the games industry. While the most the most accurate piece of software or the most accurate way of doing something isn't necessarily the best way to do it. So a really quick way to do leather for boots. And you'll also see a lot of people talk about uh, zi zigzags and Zs. So you could interpret this as a zigzag. You can interpret these as sort of like diamonds or Xs. So everyone has their own different ways to do it. How I like usually like to do it is just start from a certain pattern in, in ZBrush. So I'll hold Alt and draw with a standard brush, just sort of draw sideways. And I'll do that a couple of times and stack them on top of each other. Uh, it doesn't have to be accurate because we're all going to change it. I then take the uh, the counter opposite effect of that and just do in between on either side. And this already creates sort of like a, a zigzag pattern. You can take that all the way around. After that, usually what I like to do is just draw sort of like S's down. And what it's going to do is follow the perimeters of all the cavities we did. So, you know, you can feather that in. What I've done is just done one brush just to show how simple it can be. You don't have to be very artistic about it. So you can go that over that a couple of times. Uh, obviously, it depends how thick the leather is going to be. After that, what you basically want to do is look at these areas and connect them together. So you can either connect them together with a standard brush, just draw over it sideways. And what you're aiming for is to get rid of the corners that you see um, and it gives this buckling so you can go across it like that. Now after you've got those in I suggest uh, zooming out and basically smoothing everything quite lightly and what that's going to give you is the generic shape that you can follow. So you want to blur it almost like um, you were squint squinting your eyes that's the general rule that I like to go with and just blur it all away and then after you've done that you would then kind of come into your references make a couple of observations. I check out the video on interpreting references uh, is really useful especially when it comes to things. So with this 2D one the, the leather is quite sharp or the artist has drawn it very sharp um, so just make those observations and translate it onto your baseline. So what that might involve doing is getting a smaller standard brush, maybe just making more aggressively sharp transitions. Um, remember, you can use the move brush to basically change this. The main thing you're going for is basically trying to get uh, interpret how tight. So with that, you can get the standard brush and basically hold Alt and draw on the inside. And then that's going to give us this nice uh, sharp transition. And then every time just smooth move it away. So you can see the difference between that side of the leather and that side of the leather just by a couple of additional stand brush movements. Um, we also want to do the inversion. Leather is basically buckling. You want to increase the, the sh tightness there. So just a very thin line and go over it a couple of times and that's going to give a nice sharp effect. Um, remember where the leather is going to bend, wherever it bends, you want to blend that off because there's a lot of um, I would call it like fold energy or a lot of mass that needs to be distributed elsewhere. So once you've got a fold like this, you definitely don't want to have a shadow. So just come in and just feather that off, add a little bit more clay and let it fade out into itself. Okay. Then after that, you can insert some some variants in there, you know, take it from different angles and different interpretations. Maybe look at some real life references. Um, after that, you can also come and use the move brush and then you can just start to reposition all this around. So get a, a large move brush and then just start to move these, make them pinch in different areas as similar it is to your reference. So really quickly, you can create some leather. Now, if you imagine if this material was very smooth and it had a very sharp highlight, um, this would translate really well when it comes your bait. Marvellous designer, you do often get a bit of wobbliness or things that look like natural cloth. Another cool technique I'll show you as well, um, I'd be interested to see if this works. I cover this in the uh, making wraps tutorial. I'll also post that video down. But if you come into brushes and change your transpose tool to something called transpose cloth, it can be really useful for um, enhancing your folds. So what we can do is basically get the transform tool. And as you can see, it actually starts to crunch. And obviously that's very high resolution and it's inserting all these ripples. But if, what we can do is just come down a couple of resolutions on the geometry slider. And then when you adjust that, all it's doing is basically enhancing all the folds that you've done. So what we can do is then come back to the divisions, put it up a, a division. Now you've kind of got this really nice sharp leather effect. So it's, um, it's a nice introduction of physical sculpting, but also introducing a little bit of that simulation effect. Um, and then with leather, 
basically what you want to do afterwards. My suggestion of two or, two or one subdivisions on top of that, and it's basically going to tighten that all up and make it a little bit nicer. So if you skip a division, uh, it, it sort of like maintains that leather effect. And then you can come back in and just refine this a bit, maybe sharpen these areas and give it some 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 bend and weave and wep and all that sort of stuff. Cool. So very quickly, you can see how you can get that um, leather effect. Use a brush like pinch. I know on the reference that I saw was that these turns were very sharp and very angular. So if I wanted to match that style, basically I would come into the pinch brush. I would just get these corners and I'd pinch it up a bit. Maybe I don't like that too much because it, it strays away from the realism. So uh, just aim for somewhere sort of like in between that. I'd say. So next bit of feedback is for three boot uh, is just putting some dynamesh shapes together. So that's a really cool workflow. Obviously I share that on a different video that I'll also link in the description. Really easy at this stage to change proportions. Uh, so it's nice to see that you're following that workflow. Seems that you're trying to match a scan reference because obviously with the body, you have a lot of asymmetries in there. And obviously everyone has different shapes body that don't necessarily translate like they would with um, classic 2D drawings of anatomy. So this is a really cool task of sculpting what you see, direction to go. Because when you sculpt what you can see, then you're more likely to get that realism. So first what I'll do is, uh, especially when you're doing a side by side, is set up the reference as well. So usually what I like to do and it's great that you've taken an orthographic view, so we can do this. And for those that don't know perspective of an orthographic, if you're ever doing a front or a side shot, you ideally want to press P so perspective is turned off. And to set up, I'll usually start at the feet. So I'll just get a brush, click and hold shift, and then that's going to allow you to create a, sh a straight line. Next, you want to get the second reference and align them as best as you can, and then press control T. That's going to bring us to the transforms. So now we can adjust the height of this so it matches perfectly. I'll just come back to the paint layer and draw the top of the head, and that's basically going to be our target. So there's getting pretty close. Uh, I reckon that's going to be OK. So first starting out, it's a really good. It's nice to see that you've split up the neck components. I sometimes do that because it's so intricate there. You've got things like the clavicle and different neck muscles that are wrapping around. Sometimes it's easier to just to make that physical shape than sculpt it in. Initially, when I'm checking proportions, I'll just get the brush and hold shift and then draw some lines out and just make sure they match. These are pretty close. I mean, maybe the belly button comes up, um, but also this is totally dependent on how well this was transformed and rescaled. In general, there's nothing that's glaring in terms of the proportions. Maybe what I can see, and it depends on if this character is shrugging, shrugging or lifting up their traps, but the hand position might be a bit low on the character. So you just want to bring these arms out longer. So I could be that the arm length is too small or that the hands uh, are too short. So maybe just increase that size or bring the shoulders down. So when it comes to the rib cage and especially this sh underlying shape that you've got here, I usually try and make that very small. So if you try and imagine on this character where rib cage would be, and rib cages are usually a lot smaller on females as well, inside of here, it's going to be kind of this shape. It's going to be leading up towards the neck and just fall slightly short. And you've got a, an arrangement of smaller rib cages that sort of help for, with, with upper breathing and things like that. On your mannequin, I'd say it's a bit uh, pronounced, like it's ex it's uh, very large and coming outwards. So you just want to reduce the size of this. And that's basically going to help when it comes to the positioning of things like the breasts. So for right now, the connection is happening quite far out from the character. But when you reduce the size of this rib, rib cage, so basically pull this in and make it a lot more indicative to the other character, um, the rest of the positioning is going to be a lot easier, especially around the pectoral. So for example, the fall off that comes here. Um, Second to that is also the pelvis and the pelvis mass. So with this shape that you've got here, I'll just reduce the size of that, specifically make it a lot shorter. So what I'd aim for is look for the bony areas, ideally about here. And the nickeline is, is a good representation. That, that's sort of like a, a bony resting area. But if you can see that this distance is actually quite short. So you just want to translate it to the mannequin object that you've made here. So just shorten this down. That's also going to translate to basically where the torso finishes. So I'd get the crotch region and just basically draw a line across that. And usually what I aim for initially is a nice square shaped here. And then I can work from that. So just make sure that this is at the correct distance. So just match it across there. And then the way I like to treat the leg is just think about these as massive cylinders inserting themselves up in towards this direction. So if you go with this sort of like tubed effect, um, you're going to ace the, the crotch region, its interaction with the torso. So you've basically got the, the leg tubes there and then this region right there, that's going to be converted into something like this. So that's going to be roughly converted into that shape. And once that's fixed along with the rib cage, those two, those are sort of like your initial shapes. 
it's going to be much easier to position this. So with those two shapes complete, you'd get this uh, stomach shape. And usually I like to have it go all the way from here. And instead of it being a sphere, like a, almost like a beer belly, think of it like a long curvature that goes and leads from the bottom of the pelvis around the crotch area and all the way up to the top of the rib cage. Um, and if you think about the anatomy underneath there, it's basically all the abdominal muscles. And what the abdominal muscles are used for is basically bringing the rib cage in towards the pelvis. So those connections are going to be very important. Um, so how that actually looks from the side is you've got this long band of abdominal muscles that lead all the way here. What that basically does is create this uh, curvature that you often see. So basically, if we work out the distances, it's uh, it's going to be taking up this sort of area. Next thing I observe is basically with the calf muscles. So on the characters, these are quite uh, long and unpronounced. You'll see that the curvature happens very slow. I think with yours, what's happened is you've really tried to define where that apex and curvature is, but especially when it comes to the joint sizes, things like the, the ankle, this distance is getting a little bit too short. So sometimes that can happen as if you're working on this side of a silhouette and then you're also working on that side of a silhouette. Sometimes you can actually accidentally pinch it all together. So just go back and, and take a step back, compare it, maybe get something like a magnify just to increase the size of these joints. The most common areas that that happen is obviously on the ankle. It also happens a lot on the arm. So when two silhouettes are very close together, it's very obvious when they're getting a bit too thin. I think with this mannequin as well, what you could potentially do, uh, and it's one of the biggest shapes that come out in the, and with this character, you can almost see where the shadows and highlights are. So if I draw, draw a line from the outer hip and bring it all the way onto the inner side of the leg, you basically want to split these two sections off. Um, so it's different on different characters. Sometimes there's more muscle on one side, uh, or maybe there's more muscle muscles on the inside. But as a general rule of thumb, if you just insert that in your mannequin, so right now this is looking a bit too uh, smooth and curved, almost too cylindrical, just insert that line down here and then flatten these areas and basically you want to you want to nail that shape before you start to come in and create the muscles that lie on top because once you start to create these especially at the mannequin phase it's going to be very hard to make adjustments um so I just I wouldn't go into the muscles just yet just try and focus on the general um overall shapes of the collection of the muscle and the collection of the fat and bones side view is looking pretty good my only suggestion is potentially just to make the neck a little bit thinner so right now with all the additions of the muscles and shapes that you've inserted uh, it's getting a little bit too thick from the side so in comparison to the character um, these muscles are actually really thin and dainty and often they can't be seen, seen that much behind the skin unless they're rotating their neck or sort of like leaning forwards or leaning back so my suggestion with this is maybe uh, make two forms of mannequin so the first one will be your initial observation of basically how thick the neck is so it could be something like this you'd save that off as a subtool so you'd have something here that could be like your, your base scalar then you would hide that in ZBrush and then from that you'd basically build on top so you maybe duplicate that sphere and start to build on top of it and then when you start to make those additions like bring in extra shape it's naturally gonna point outwards and increase in sizes like this. Maybe you insert some some traps here and it's all starting to sort of like push out a little bit. Then once you've completed and added all of those, maybe you can combine them all as one subtool and then basically bring back your initial shape and then just try and insert it back into that original volume. So that's a really good workflow to get into is just basically save out um, the initial sizes and then almost work backwards and bring it back. Then once you've changed the size of this, you know, made it a little bit it's shorter and then it's seated well in the initial shape you can basically hide this one and then continue to work on the sculpt so take it in in stages just like that down towards the leg uh, the thing that I would say is just try not to separate the sections of the leg so much so obviously we've got two parts of the leg which happens around the knee this you've got the hamstrings that are obviously straight and then the tendons go in then you've also got the calf muscle which is naturally curved often people do is this sort of like pinching shape but when it comes to the back of the knee uh, and sort of that tenderness interaction this is actually usually quite flat so instead what you're doing is creating this flat shape the hamstrings come off it and then also the the calves sort of like blend in with that so basically turn this pinching shape into more of a, a flat structure like that it's going to look a little bit better also definitely work a, a little bit more on the feet I know this they're so out of the way but once you get that sorted um, it gives a sense of physicality and it's also going to help you constructing the top of the leg for example with this character um, the shins are coming out and she's got quite pronounced muscles on sort of like around her shins that sometimes gives this bowing effect you've also got a bony nodule that happens there so what you want to do is just translate that towards the bottom of the knee with yours it's a, a little bit bit too concave and arched like that so just bring these outwards a bit like that with the glutes um, the glutes connection basically what I usually like to do is where this 
transaction transaction happens sort of like from the leg to the back of the glute usually like to wrap this in towards the center sort of around its connection on the outside of the leg uh, you're almost going to have this sort of shape so the directions uh, are basically going to be flowing in this way so what that might involve is basically coming to your front view getting this side of the leg and then just pushing it inwards slightly uh, the glute's going to rest a little bit nicely you can have more space to have that on top you can see how that's basically interpreted on the scan um, you've got a lot of musculature that's wrapping around here and it's going in, in this direction you can see how curved it is and how built up it is obviously different with different characters but that's the general direction that it's going in okay. so we'll start our feedback with a user called Sonia who's working on a bounty hunter character here's a picture of the concept person mentions that they're doing the marvelous designer to zbrush workflow so a really interesting workflow to go through great to see that they've added some reference so when we're giving feedback it's really useful to see what the user is going for and this example seems to be a focus on an interesting cloth sculpting element and also maybe the focus be on these leather boots so a really cool texturing opportunity well with um, sculpting things like leathers and cracks funnily enough a couple of these references are used for a past project where i was doing um, a 3d boot ready for the games engine uh, so i definitely know how what it's like to go through this experience so in terms of feedback, I think the construction of the character is very good. So there's nice um, layers that are inserted here. Potentially right now, compared to the concept, uh, the boots might be a bit thick or they might be taking up a bit too much space. If you look on the concept, um, they're very, very thin and dainty, more bulky, like uh, the person would have like more space in there, like big socks. And in terms of the Marvelous Designer simulation of the scarf. A scarf can be very difficult when it comes to Marvelous Designer. You won't necessarily get the results you want. Usually what I find, especially when it comes to neck pieces and things that are around the shoulder, I'll tend to just redo that in ZBrush because there's going to be very defined shapes and crisscrosses if you look at the shapes here. It's hard to achieve that in Marvelous Designer. Uh, usually it's just easy to make a plane and then basically export it from that. So Marvelous Designer is really good on acting on compounding folds. So for example, with the trousers that's a really good opportunity to use marvelous designer also whenever there's sort of like a bend around a t-shirt around the corners um, of a joint that's very useful when something's hanging from a character sometimes it's a little bit easier especially for things like collars and scarves is to actually sculpt that manually then you're not going to have all this sort of like weird drapery that's going on and as it's a portfolio piece it's a really good opportunity to actually practice sculpting drapery um, so i highly advise just give it a chance to redo in ZBrush. In terms of the character and the face representation, I think with the sculpt in comparison to the concept, the sculpt might be coming across a little bit too young and that could be coming from a lot of the fat on the face. If you look at the concept, um, this person looks a little bit older, especially someone with less body fat percentage potentially. You can mostly see that around the nose, like it's very no uh, bony and angled nose. So you might just want to come into Z brush, maybe introduce more like stylized planes. So get the trim brush and just try to introduce these sharper angles. Maybe get something like a pinch brush that might be useful. And wherever you can, getting the damn standard brush and just inserting it in areas where folds start to come out when the character gets older. In terms of head structure and form, I think the proportions are pretty good. Um, um, maybe potentially around the neck area could do with a bit of work. So say, for example, on the front, the Adam apple looks very uh, wide there, whereas the Adam apple is, is actually quite sharp and thin. So maybe just push this inside and just squeeze it again. The pinch tool is going to be very useful for that. Sometimes what can be useful is if you're copying a character, try and look for references that look similar to this concept. So maybe there's an actor who looks very similar, or has similar features, and then you can use that as a reference to transfer over to your ZBrush sculpt. Moving on to the drapery and the clothes, I think there's a a couple of changes that you can make which would improve the character so the first one is to do with in general the games industry whenever we have a trench coat they're usually quite hard to work with we'd either try and simulate that with dynamics um, but especially if it's a, a baked in character it's going to be very hard to rig that and move it about so with any opportunity i suggest getting your trench coat really pushing it up up into the uh, the corners basically underneath the armpit so it's going to be easier to animate i think here as well there could be a slightly better shape representation so a lot of the silhouette for this character is almost bowing down and then it comes down into this sort of sharp angle so you just want to introduce that into your sculpt um, although you may have done it straight in the anticipation that you're going to simulate it um, but ideally you just want to bake that in straight away and like get that shape first so down here there's a couple of folds and those usually come out from marvelous designer doesn't match the 
concept and sometimes because it's so close to a joint it might cause a lot of issue when the character's walking so i suggest in marvelous designer just try and like pull that area out during the simulation um, but probably what's a little bit easier is just to smooth out in zbrush just like make those repairs a tip that i suggest and a general rule of thumb is i usually like to keep folds sort of in this area there's not too much deformation that's going to go on when the character's walking those folds tend to look quite good um, also towards the bottom of the boot where the cloth starts to build up obviously that's just going to be uh, an ankle joint and anything above that's not going to move too much the problem areas are definitely around the knees and also when you get towards the waist if you've got any sort of bespoke folds that's going to cause some issues especially lateral folds so as a general rule just try and keep all your folds uh, in these sort of box areas in terms of the t-shirt uh, on the character i think there might be additional layers that are going on here so i can at least see one two and three going to the trench coat you potentially haven't done that yet or you might want to introduce that now so you're going to add a layer of interest there in terms of the t-shirt and the folds that are going on with the character it seems to be quite a baggy undershirt and you're getting a lot of fold build up towards the bottom and basically around the top it seems to be resting quite nicely we transfer that over to your character and look at basically this window it seems that a lot of those folds uh, haven't got too much gravity in mind so for example if that was laid out on a table i'd expect to see those folds but obviously because the character's upright you want to see a lot of bunching happening towards the belt because that's going to be a very tight belt and the drapery is going to fall off from around the pectoral or toral area so up here so you won't see too many folds around the chest and again that also helps helps with uh, things like twisting and rotation when it comes to the character whether they're you know throwing punches or doing things like that so overall I think it's a really good start the first things I would basically do is just try and translate a lot of what I can see from the 2d concept to the 3d concept so the first one would obviously just be the interpretation of that face so just making it look like a, an older character maybe a slight increased accuracy on where things like the collar and the positioning of the scarf is located so in one of the videos I go over basically the triangulation technique which is drawing triangles and understanding standing shapes a little bit deeper you can then transfer that over to your concept redraw that triangle and then you can see how close your representation is so maybe just go through that process to translate it better obviously we use that on the coat on the 3d example here the coat's very flat you might just want to introduce uh, a bit more curvature there i then move on just to change the proportions so right now this boot is looking very large almost like it was uh, meant for like ice climbing or things like that whereas on the primary character it's very dainty and thin so just translate that overall and from a games perspective just get rid of any nuisance areas that might pop up in the in the future so anything around the joints and also around the shoulders the shoulder is going to be one of the most dynamic joints there so ideally you kind of want to push these up as far as possible or as far as that you can get away with next bit of feedback is for use called big feet and uh, this is in the art feedback forum so probably just a quick feedback doing sort of like a, a stylized anime character i suggest it's got anime elements um but maybe like more realistic proportions so overall i think the uh the location of the gear and the interpretation is pretty good like if i start to draw lines over where it might be looking slightly different is basically the proportion of the face and portion of the feet and what that can sometimes do is just throw off um, the size of the character or can be seen as the size of the character so while uh, mo a majority of the lengths uh, uh, the thing that is different is potentially the thickness of certain features so say for example the size of the neck on this character is very thin whereas on the interpretation it's a little bit thicker um, so maybe you want to reduce that size so look at the character and just imagine how many necks for example it would take to get to the outside of the body um, you could maybe potentially use that but also remember it depends if you've got the accuracy of the length of the um, the shoulders and if they're too wide or too short so just double check that that's sort of like all aligned nicely but just from just from looking I can tell that you just need to reduce the size of this neck and maybe uh, reduce the outer border silhouette of the head from what I can see uh, on the on the 2D concept is that the eyes are quite uh, wide but they don't necessarily mean that they're large 3D concept I can see that the eyeballs themselves are actually quite large and in general the eye area the visuals of this sort of like is generated from um, the shapes and proportions so actually you want to reduce the size of what you've done here and just adjust um, how much they're sort of like squinting or how much the whites of the eye are showing and basically anything surrounding that area so it might be that the might have to come inwards what you've also got is a lot of sharp features on the character so say for example if we were going to draw some straight lines you've got some really sharp angles uh, that taper downwards on the sculpt what i can see is they uh, they're a bit more they're a bit softer and they sort of like transition slowly down into here so you just want to 
interpret a couple of that style. Same with the nose. So you basically got the, the size and the proportions, right? So if you were going to draw like a box around it, the, sh the shape is good. But if you're really looking close, a bit pixelated here, but there are some sub shapes that are also quite sharp and stylized. You just want to transition those into here. Right now they're a bit soft, almost interpreting like a bit of a young character. So just really come in and start to bring the planes of the nose out, start to angle those in, maybe sharpening up the top of the brow and how it leads back into the nose. That's basically going to bring more of the stylized um, character out. At this point also, um, while it might seem minor, it's really important just to get really accurate with where the hair positioned and sort of these spaces. So if I was going to draw a square inside this negative space, basically where um, the forehead is showing in between these two banks and translate it onto yours. So right now, maybe the forehead is, is a slightly too large. Like this is actually quite a, a large shape. So you either want to bring this inwards but what I suspect is happening is that the width of the head. So if you were going to either try and like increase the size of these bangs or just reduce the size of this space um, in the forehead, it won't actually um, fix the overall look of the character because what she has is actually uh, quite a narrow head. So first you want rule of thumb for everyone is before you make an observation, just make sure you've got the, the base structure correct. Because if you haven't got the base structure correct and you start to make these edits that we, um, that we observe here and translate them it's just not going to look good it's going to sort of like throw it off reduce the width of the head and then start to look internally at the sub shapes and then then fix those off but yeah overall i suggest sort of like just bringing bringing the head a little bit smaller what you could do as well is maybe just come into photoshop and um mask this head and just cut uh, copy it a couple of times and bring it down the body and then that's going to give you a nice representation of um, the scale and proportion of things. It could be at the same time for example that um, even the hands are getting a little bit too large in comparison to the the daintiness of the concept but apart from that it's uh, a very good character. It um, depends how close you want to be to the 2D reference basically. So next bit of feedback is for Mobin70 from the WIT forum and he's working on a character for the Rookie Awards and this is an interesting one because he's starting from his own concept. So that can be fun, but also at the same time can be a bit challenging. But one nice thing about that is you can sort of like customize it as you go along. You just have to be really confident with the style and design that you do. Personally, I don't think I'm very good at design, so I usually like to work from a 2D concept. So, so far I'm liking the style of the concept. I'm also liking the style and space that you've given in the 3D character. Um, he's nice and opened up, so it's going to be easy to rig. It seems that you've left spaces of rest quite nicely. So when it comes to animation, you only really want folds in important places where it matters. One of the first things I see is potentially the characters um, suffering a bit from like a buckaroo effect. So in general, the more equipment you add to a character, usually what happens is they start to expand outwards, right? Um, so right here, he's losing quite a lot of his um, his taper and his underlying structure. And that's because there's just so much equipment. So what it might be an idea to do is take this into something like transpose master and just select all the gear and equipment maybe get a lower subdivision mode and just bring everything towards the inside because um, on your original concept obviously he's got this tapered effect now a tricky thing is it, it can sometimes be a bit annoying if you have a, a base body underneath here and what will happen is often the gear is going to intersect with your base body and that can sometimes annoy people so what i would suggest is just focus on what you can see um, and if it looks right to you and it feels right, then in general, I would just go with that. Um, in the past, I've definitely fallen accustomed to thinking that because it's outside the bounds of my base character. Um, but what I slowly start to learn is just make sure it looks good from the outside. Um, there's a lot of illusions that happen. A funny kind of trope when it comes to CG is whenever they throw a spear through someone, the physical spear has a direction that comes on the outside. And that's usually correct. It kind of looks a bit odd. It looks a bit off. So often what they do in CG is they actually make a spear that looks like this and so it, it angles down and then it comes out at this direction now obviously that's not physically accurate but when you take away the center to the user it kind of looks a bit more realistic so it's the same with game character art we just sort of try and um, appease the customer or like the person who's buying the game so right now you're using um, fiber mesh so this could be for a preview the only bit of feedback and sort of like workflow suggestion is to not use fiber mesh especially if you're trying to get this into the games engine obviously it's going to be very shader dependent and shader based um, and fiber mesh really doesn't offer any sort of advantage when it comes to creating hair strands or, or, or fur or fibers i appreciate some people have certain workflows that can use it but um, often it's very 
bad. My only other bit of feedback would be um, just this object at the back, really. Um, to me, it's nondescript what would actually go in there. And potentially it's a little bit too blocky and large, definitely for the back of the character. Um, maybe if you really wanted it or is it, if it was a very specific shape of a, a weapon, maybe you could put some sub shapes in here and some intricate designs. Um, but in general, as a block out, block out, it seems to be um, absorbing a lot of the, the back end. So maybe make that a little bit smaller. In terms of the face, I think um, you've actually captured the ethnicity quite well. So I've got a couple of Turkish friends and it's almost like you've made my friend here. So <laughs> I think that's really well done. The only thing is uh, from a couple of the concepts you've posted, for example, these two, the face uh, seems to be a bit more, bit more serious or characterful. Um, whereas in the sculpt that you've done coming across a bit too neutral. Um, so we don't really, looking at his face, we don't really see, you know, sort of like how aggressive he is, if he's like someone who's dangerous to work with, too neutral in the sense that we don't know sort of like what his, his backstory is. So maybe you could introduce some sharper elements or more emotion in the face. I think that would definitely benefit from it. Next bit of feedback is uh, for a user called Chase, who seems to be enrolled on um, a form of course, which is cool. So ideally weekly posts might be coming through, which is cool. It's nice to see that you've started to render your character in Marmoset 4. So just basically seeing how the scope is interpreting, because um, at the end of the day, when we're making characters, we're making them for engines. And sometimes what you're sculpting doesn't necessarily translate that well, or what you can see in uh, engine or even the game lighting. So a very quick look, I think the character's been translated well. So there's nothing that's really popping out to me that's saying that there's a major incorrection. I'll look a little bit deeper and just see if there's any areas that you could improve on. So basically working on the silhouette, maybe what I suggest is uh, around the flank area, there seems to be a lot of uh, mass or fat. So it doesn't really match what's happening with um, what I can see with the, the body fat percentage of the skin and the style of the character. On the reference, it seems to be a lot flat that's usually what you find with abdominal muscles, especially with a skinny person, is that those muscles are often quite flat, uh, but they do contour quite a lot. So it might be an idea just to shave off any bits of fat that you have extruding out of here uh, to better match this character. I would have a look a little bit on the um, the back muscles of the character as well. Right now, the front is very look is look, almost looking malnutritioned, um, and this character isn't necessarily muscly. It's just that their muscles are being portrayed because they're so thin. So on the back, what I'd usually expect is not to see as much mass. So right here, this is uh, sort of indicative of someone who's actually quite built up. Um, so what you want to do is basically come in here and just reduce the amount um, of incision that's happening. Happening, like especially in the divots here you usually find that with a bodybuilder who's potentially flexing um, or bringing the, their sort of like shoulder blades back now what you will have a lot of is definitely on the spine you're gonna have a lot of bony areas so my suggestion is just to draw the muscle away from the spine so when someone gains muscle they basically start to build muscle along the erector spine and it starts to overlap and take the space uh, but with skinny people usually the bone uh, the muscle is a further distance away from the bone so basically you want to take all this uh, this mass and muscle and just lead it outwards and let the spine rest a little bit more also around the uh, forearm area i reckon you could do a bit more interpretation of uh, basically the stresses and strains that are going along those muscles and along those uh, bone structures so right now it's looking quite quite full so almost like you would see with a, a normal person uh, but with the with the character if you look at these muscles they've got quite a lot of uh, definition but also at the same time they're really almost like a twisted flannel so they've got really sharp incisions that are rotating around if you look at the 2d concept we can really start to see uh, where the ulna and the radius are starting to just like switch on top of each other and everything around that is um is quite contort and deep so it's really evident on this side it almost looks like the forearm has been split uh, into two sections with this sort of area leading up to the elbow and obviously this wrapping around on the concept you've you've started to introduce that but i say what you could do is actually just really increase the amount of incision that's happening here with these major shapes um, and especially on the inside so instead of this line leading down here uh, what you actually want to do is have, have it lead all the way underneath and go almost onto the inside of the wrist and then it gives that um, that nice bone crossed effect i think you've done um, these folds really well obviously we went through another user's feedback on basically how to do those sorts of skins so i think you've implemented those sort of features Maybe at this point it's an idea to start to insert some asymmetry in there. I know it can feel a little bit weird when you come off asymmetry. You only have to think about this area. So every time you're sculpting, just remember to press X um, and everything will be okay. Don't worry because, you know, if you do muck it up, you can always repair it and bring it back. But it'd be nice to get some different angles here. Maybe change um, the association of the rib. Sometimes when people, you know, have their certain posture ailments, parts of their ribs will be at different stages. They'll um, 
breathe into different parts of their lungs so, so often their rib cages will be sort of like distorted a little bit um, definitely around sort of like central lines you want to eliminate any form um, of symmetry and that's just going to give your realism a bit more effect and it's going to have a really nice nice uh, stylized design zooming in a little bit closer here um, I think you could work a little bit on the top of the pectoral I actually like what you've done with the skin overlapping with the tenderness pec area and sort of like the mechanics of that I wouldn't focus too much on necessarily having Having these triangle striations and like indicating that on top of skin um often with characters you don't tend to see that a a bodybuilder and b also have a low body fat percentage uh, with skinnier people it is just like a normal flat i think with this sculpt it, it kind of looks cool it has a nice effect um, but definitely this area could do with less um a pronounced muscle surface so maybe just flattening that area i'd suggest and with skinny characters it's a really cool opportunity to basically bring out the sternum uh, this is usually quite a large area so maybe just like flatten that off and then have it lead with its striations uh, that gives sort of like a nasty um thin effect i think that's i think where it's coming over done is um on the render that you've done here for example so the fold and striation that's having there potentially indicates that there's um fat or excess skin that it's starting to fold under uh, so with the skinny character I wouldn't really tend to see that that'd be very very flat uh, depends if the person got fat and then thin but that's um, sort of like a different topic um, but here you can definitely see that uh, there's not much there's not too much sternum that's happening the muscles seem to be almost connecting in the center increase the size of that it's the same sort of concept that we have on the spine is that um, you know when muscle muscly people come it starts to encroach around the bone but with thinner people it's it tends to sort of like lead away from the bone and, and sort of joints so in terms of the face and the feedback i think um the character does look like it is in the concept maybe the character is a little bit more contoured in areas so for example uh, where the skull region is and the eye and the skin of the eye basically uh where you've got the corner of the i'll try and describe this as accurately as i can uh, it usually comes a little bit wider everything on the inside of that the type of skin changes so the skin becomes really really thin so what you want to have ideally is almost this shelving that transitions right across right now it seems to be um, a little bit too bulky see if i can get a higher resolution image here so basically what, what's being almost lost here is the transition from this big bulky mass um underneath the eye where the bone is located and then on the inside this all this eyelid shape seems to be quite thin uh sorry it seems to be quite thick now but on the concept it's very thin almost like it's um melting or like falling off the eye and that's what it's that's what's giving this really like eerie look to this uh, this 2d concept so if you're trying to capture that kind of look um i would just look around the eye area it, it almost reminds me a bit of like um, a vulture and so that that theme needs to sort of like be extracted back out of uh, your sculpt i'd say really hard to describe because it's almost um, thematics but hopefully you get the gist of what I'm saying there now this this section is up to you um, maybe you're thinking that it would come through animation but if you're doing a portfolio piece I suggest to just basically draw it in now while you can on the sculpt um, with this 2D, 2d concept obviously his nostrils are quite flared up and the musculature to do that is in between the nose and the eye and what's happening is this is all contracting um, and it's creating this nice little arch shape basically this area here is giving this this sort of shape up and towards the nose um, on your sculpt I say that isn't being introduced as much if I was going to draw this section here I'd say it's a little bit more like that so if you want to get more of the character out of the 2d concept I suggest just curling this up a little bit more bringing the nostrils out and that's also going to sharpen the nose and give him this um, malnutrition vulture aggressive look uh, which I think can be better interpreted onto this this 3d character um, potentially also at the same time if we basically take this shape which is the side of the face up to the cheekbone lead it all the way down to the chin this is actually quite a, a flat surface almost um, like they could put a plank of wood against there with yours it's a little bit more built up and it's potentially because of the width of the chin so the chin might be getting a little bit too large as it is now so if i draw it through here draw it there it's a little hard because i'm sort of running out of pixels maybe i can see it on here so i'm basically talking about this area um that seems to be sort of like folding out because of the skin you've obviously added a lot of um, wrinklage which is cool but just get a move brush and bring it all the way back towards the center um sort of like inserting back onto here another observation i can make is basically happening globally from the head and, and basically the face is positioned wrapped around the skull um so i'll try and use sort of like a, a liquefy to describe it very quickly so right now his face is looking a little bit flat so what i 
suggest doing is uh, I'm going to try and translate it in Photoshop the best I can here. Just press this transform grid function. And what I'm really expecting is just the face to wrap around a little bit more, kind of come backwards. Um, obviously, it's going to distort the front of the face here. What I'm really focusing on is how far the eye is coming back in 3D space. Um, so right now it's falling forwards a little bit too much and it's also falling high. Now, obviously, we've got a little bit of warping that happened with the chin here, but primarily where I want you to look is the bone around the eye socket and where that's positioned in 3D space. So sort of focus on that area. Right now, it's a little bit too high, sort of like floating up in this direction. Another thing I suggest is basically try and get as accurate to the skin texture as you can to start with. So right now, I don't know if this is manually painted on or maybe you got a scan of some sorts, but he's a bit too tanned and generic, especially around the body in comparison to this concept. So basically what I'm reading from this concept is that he's almost got like a, a bit of a tan line here from having a shirt on. I think what the 2D artist is trying to say is that this is very, very pale and not really seen the sun, whereas his um, from the down down to this section been very um burnt sort of like red and tanned so what you ideally want to get in the concept is basically just darken and it will involve darkening so a darker shade of orange um, almost like a brown towards these areas maybe introduce that tan line and then also just make this really pale um, and then I think it will read better as the initial 2D concept because right now it's a, it's a really cool character as it is and it sort of like looks looks real like realistic and like semi stylized but um if you want to be really true to the 2D concept, I'll just sort of like introduce those. Here we've got some feedback for Jazzerite. Um, and it's nice to see a character that's sort of like on the later stages of progression. So in terms of feedback, a lot of it will probably be focused on more texturing and shader interpretation, maybe a little bit of lighting. On the subject of lighting, obviously this might be a whip, but especially when you're using black, black backgrounds, I don't really suggest using a black background, maybe something like a gray or introduce a gradient. And if you are doing that, definitely uh, have a couple of rim lights just to separate it from the background. So you're going to have some nice side shots and angles. I've got a video on lighting. So the best practices for setting up lighting in Marmoset. So I'll also link that down, down with lots, lots of videos have been linked, um, but that's just basically going to be easier to see. It's also going to bring out a couple of features in your shader. So for example, with fur and hair, a lot of its visual comes from the light that's coming through it, sort of like subsurface and translucency. On the subject of your fur shader, I think right now, potentially, Essentially, the individual hair strands are a little bit too small. And so from a distance, what's happening is it's starting to get very um, almost wispy, like a, a bit of a cobweb. So especially when it comes to games art, we usually try to overemphasize things or just try to make clusters or clumps of hair. So say this was like a, a fur, instead of making it thin with a more like a realistic look, which you would see in CG. You just want to clump these together and really make um, big defined elements. Uh, you also want to introduce as much variance as possible, because right now um, across the border and across the center, it, it all seems to be uh, of a similar sort of like thickness and shape. Um, so when you look at it, when a user looks at it, they can't really pick and extract information out of there. So maybe just vary the shapes of your hair strands um, and then that's going to make it read a lot better. In terms of the skin shader, uh, I don't know if potentially you're doing in Unreal or Mama set, but right now uh, it's got quite a, f a flat dead look. So that usually comes from a lack of subsurface. You can usually see it where the shadows start to gray out. So I would look into your skin shaders, maybe just add some subsurface profile if you're in Unreal 5 um, or if you wanted to, you could take it all the way and just draw a subsurface map. Overall, I think it's a cool character. I'd really love to see your topology. I'd love to see the UV unwraps. Um, these are all the things that I would ask for. Say, for example, if someone was applying for one of our roles in the character art, I'd really want to see every single element. So in your forum, it might be an idea just to lay that all to bear so uh, we can give you some more in-depth feedback hopefully. But overall, I think it's a cool character. Uh, also, at the same time, you might just want to adjust a couple of the colors, tones and saturations. So right here, we've got a, I think what is a hair strand, but it's getting lost because the color is so similar uh, to the underlying fabric. So obviously, this is a very monochromatic character. Um, and a lot of that is working with a broad range of lightness. So that's the only thing that can give you the variance is really dark browns and really light browns. So just make sure you're making use of that entire range um, to separate each one of the layers off of the character. Maybe the, the brightness is potentially getting a little bit confused because the 
the skin is so bright yet at the same time the of the cloth is really dark um so that is quite a, a harsh contrast contrast you might want to reduce the contrast of the skin and the clothes but increase the contrast of the clothes on top of themselves hopefully that makes sense it's uh, it's a bit more of a like a, a later date practice thing 